Update 1.11.8 is out and it might not seem like a big update at first, but they made 38 changes. The first and most obvious changes is what they've done with the global map. The world has been shuffled and a new watchtower has been added to create a map that gradually expands. The watchtower is already unlocked for us veterans, but new players will have to unlock it before they are able to access the police station. They made a lot of graphical changes to the map, like this road, but you will also notice that they made this area look a lot like a swamp, which implies that this watchtower will be the one that we were able to unlock when they release the ATV. They made event locations look smaller, they changed the NPC base system so that bases will now disappear. Once you enter and exit an NPC base, you get a one hour timer before the base disappears. I believe they did this to stop other players from storing extra items at NPC bases. They added eight new mini events, including helping Jack at his base, saving the private at home, the forest edge, the witch, the drone, the raiders and the deer, the old mansion, and an AI driving a motorcycle when you visit an airdrop. I would normally make video guides for all these events, but I'm currently traveling for my brother-in-law's wedding, so I have written a summary of all these events and put them on my official Facebook and Reddit pages. You can find links to those in the description and pinned post. I do put extra info on those pages from time to time, so make sure to follow them if you were interested in that. These events are pretty cool, and I believe they will add a lot of diversity and intrigue to new players as they start the game. In fact, I think a lot of the changes of this update were designed for new players. For example, they added a bunch of prompts to brand new players, teaching them how to play the game. They added four new active skills, the zip gun with the improved revolver base, the AK-47 with the knife, the makeshift bat with the powerful plank, and the saw blade mace engine. You obviously have to get the blueprints to access those skills. They added a put all button to chess, which is a very nice feature. They added St. Patrick Day packs to the shop including the Irish pack and the green pack. They also added the tactical backpack to the special forces pack. You can also find the green St. Patrick's Day hat at Dealer Joe's that gives five armor. Sometimes he offers that hat in exchange for some items. They added the tactical backpack to the survival guide in the free version. They added the mannequin, which I believe was first suggested by Starsnack, which I could be wrong on that. The mannequin has 12 different poses and is a really cool item. You can buy it from the shop as part of the new St. Patrick's Day packs. And because it's an aesthetic item, I think it's a great thing for Kafir to charge money for. And lastly, they added the wardrobe, which allows you to change your gender, hairstyle, color, and name. Basically, all the stuff we were able to do for free, now you have to build a wardrobe and pay 25 coins to make the changes. I know some of you might be upset that they are now charging for something that used to be free, but keep in mind that these are aesthetics that they are charging for, and as I mentioned in my recent video, charging for aesthetics is much better than charging for the game itself. So hopefully as they add more purchases like this, they will reduce how much the game is pay to play. Well, that's it guys. Sorry the quality of this video is not as good as usual. I'm recording this on my gamer headset in a cabin in Vermont with snow all around me. So the view is incredible, but the audio quality isn't that great. Alright guys, I'll see you next time.